of the health and safety compensation culture are among a raft of new proposals under consideration by the government. And speaking to Sky Sports News, Wayne Rooney's admitted for the first time that allegations about his private life may be affecting his game. Now, as the nights close in, the battle for the big television audiences begins in earnest. Strictly Come Dancing will attempt to wipe the floor with the X Factor, while The Apprentice and 71 Degrees North battle it out for midweek share. But while reality TV dominates the autumn schedules, does the demise of Big Brother herald the beginning of the end for the format? Well, joining us to cast a critical eye is the arts columnist Sam Leith, and to take us through the pitfalls and perks of stardom is the Apprentice winner and director of the Raw Talent Academy, Lee McQueen. And we're also joined by the pop star to opera star winner down the line from Manchester, Darius Campbell. Good to speak to you all. Sam, I'm going to start with you first. Um, so are you looking forward with relish to a cosy autumn of takeaways curled up in front of the, the telly on a Saturday and Sunday night? With some relish, but relish and a bit of self-disgust, I think, because <laughs> there's, su there's such a sort of element of sadism in these shows, I think, that, that you find yourself gripped by them. But what you're, what you're really... You know, the premise is saying, we're going to transform someone's life. These people are going to become stars. But the reason the show's run so long is because you're getting the pleasure of watching the people, you know, the dreams tinkling and shattering like broken glass of all the, their fellow contestants. Do you make a distinction between the kind of programmes, between the programmes like Big Brother, which were effectively programmes where you're simply observing people, and the programmes like Britain's Got Talent, perhaps, where people are actually having to demonstrate they're good at something? Well, yeah, I think there's, there's been a shift. And actually, and the demise of Big Brother uh, sort of seems like the end of a first period when it was all about just being, you know, who you were on screen and you know you do tasks but they weren't important um, now it's there's a bit of doing you know this kind of old style talent show has come back but I think the basic premise is the same which is that it doesn't really matter what you're doing as long as you're doing it on television now Lee um, you on series four of The Apprentice I, uh, yeah. I watched it and enjoyed it enormously how, how has it changed your life being on such a reality show Huge. I mean, I think the, the difference is um, with being on the show and not being on the show is, is catapulted me to an experience that I would never have had in my previous role. I worked in a corporate organisation for most of my career, um, 13 years, um, up until this point, and the experience that the show gave me, not only being on the show, but obviously working for Lord Sugar for the two years that I have, is, is given me huge amounts of experience and insight into business that I would have never had before. Um, so, as you can probably tell, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Now, Sam was talking about people's dreams tinkling away from them. Do you feel that perhaps being on one of these shows is for anybody? Or do you think it's a, t a certain kind of person who can get through it relatively unscathed? Yeah, I think, so. I think, I think that's fair to say, certainly with The Apprentice. I mean, you know, the, the Apprentice, at the end of the day, you have a job that you have to work really hard at once you've got that role um, and once you've won The Apprentice. So, you know, it becomes a lifestyle for you that you need to work at. And, and like in anything in business, for example, you have to work hard in order to achieve. So it's not a case of kind of resting on the laurels once you've uh, once you've come up with the goods effectively from the apprentice. It's actually going on, and, and actually the hard work starts after you've won the show with the apprentice. Absolutely. Well, uh, Darius Campbell is uh, down the line from Manchester. He was, of course, a finalist on Pop Idol, and you're also taking time out with the history of the big band tour at the moment, Darius. I mean, you are perhaps part of the branch of the most emotional branch of, the, of these shows, really. Do, do you feel that you were used or manip manipulated at all in the filming? No, uh, 10 years ago when I did my first audition, it was to get a record contract. I was lucky that I went back and, and the public uh, gave me a chance to uh, be put forward in front of a national audience. And from that, I was signed not actually to Simon Cowell's initial offer, um, but to Steve Lillywhite, the U2 producer, um, on the basis of songs that I wrote. So it gave me an amazing platform. Um, to, uh, to you know, spread my wings and, and have a career so far that's lasted 10 years in the business. And I'm, I'm incredibly grateful and, and I'm, I'm here doing my thing and now able to produce my own shows as well as um, front them. And the history of the big bands is, is something that is you know, very much at, at my heart uh, because we're able to give back to charities like Help for Heroes. So I, I see um, all of these uh, auditions as an opportunity, I think, for young talents to come through. And then for those that stand the test of time, uh, that have the desire, will, drive, whatever it might be, uh, to be able to give back, not just to the audience, but to uh, charitable causes as well. What do you think of the calibre of the contestants on the shows 10 years after you did your first one? <laughs> That's a good question. Well, I will tell you that I'm glued. Um, and I will tell you that anything that has Simon Cowell in it um, is a favourite of mine, as he and I are now friends. And the last time we had uh, dinner, 
he uh, he was very complimentary about a song that I'd written. So absolutely, the the contestants that he vets and he thinks are going to be a, a big star, um, like Leona Lewis, they're some of my favorites. Um, oh. There's an argument maybe that, you know, a bit like uh, digging for gold or you're, you're, you're sieving for gold, the big nuggets come out first. Saying that, new talent is always coming through. So I'm, I'm very encouraging of anyone that wants to stand up and, uh, and entertain an audience. And certainly uh, the idea is to get back on your feet if you ever get knocked down by the judges' comments. I'm glad you've kissed and made up with Simon Cowell, that's for sure. And Sam, it is fair to say that these programmes do allow a certain emotional outlet, don't they? It's very rare to watch a programme without seeing somebody burst into tears. No, I mean, no, no, there, you'd be disappointed. Is there some merit in that, do you think? It allows us all to have a bit of a, a good old weep on a Saturday night. I think night. so. We don't have Princess Diana anymore, so if we can cry at these shows, that's great. The big <laughs> nuggets come out, as he says. <laughs> Lee, um, would you do it again or would you do any other reality such show again, do you think? I think it needs to be relevant, Jane, to be honest. You know, uh, the, the Apprentice is, is first and foremost, it is a reality show and they are making a TV programme, but it is a business programme as well. And so for me, I went on it for serious reasons in terms of actually getting a, a long term career opportunity out of that. So I'm not 100% sure whether the, the different reality formats would suit what I'm looking for, to do. Um, but if there was another show that was a business reality show that come up, um, yeah, I'd, I'd probably do it again, yeah, definitely. What about you, Darius? Do you think you could be tempted to, uh, to, to give up the Big, <laughs> the big Bad Tour and, uh, and appear on any of the shows that you're seeing at the moment in the format that they're on at the moment on the telly? I've been very lucky uh, to have appeared on, on three shows that have given me an incredible experience. Uh, but my favourite ones are uh, performing for the Queen or uh, performing for my dad, uh, who recovered from terminal cancer, and, and performing for him at the Royal Abbott Hall with a song that I'd written for him. Those are moments that, uh, for me, I, I live for. And, um, and certainly, they're not moments that you can live in front of a reality TV camera. And so I've had such a great time, you know, doing all the auditions that I've done so far. And Opera Star allowed me to appear in my debut opera this year with Carmen and the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. But certainly, for me, my sights are set on uh, the next album, uh, which I'm writing right now, and, uh, and doing some more acting, which doesn't have anything to do with reality TV. <laughs> so uh, I'm very grateful for all the experiences so far and, and look forward to seeing you guys soon. Darius, good to talk to you, and uh, Lee McQueen and Sam Leith here in the studio. Nice to see you both, and uh, Sam, so I look much. forward to seeing you on a Strictly Come Dancing one day soon. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget that you can let us know what you think about any of the stories that we're covering today. Email us at news at sky.com or text us on 84501. And if you fancy following us on Twitter, it's Sky News Weekend. Now, Australia is facing its worst plague of locusts for 75 years. The insects have thrived this year after the wettest September on record. Farmers across at least four states are being warned that their harvests could be devastated, with billions of pounds worth of crops being destroyed. The Commonwealth Games will be hoping to see a few records broken when it gets underway, but one record has already been toppled in Newcastle. The human mattress dominoes record. 400 mattresses fell in under four minutes, beating by 20 the previous record set in New York. The event involved a line of volunteers falling back on mattress as Guinness World Records is being asked to verify their efforts. I don't know if they were fortified by any Guinness before they did it then. This is Sky News on our website, skynews.com. Not your average house party, the erotic evening being held at the Commons. Rooney speaks, the football star talks exclusively to Sky following those allegations about his private life. And we're live at Celtic Manor for all the latest Ryder Cup results. Now. The Spendlers love Sky Plus. It lets them fit their favourite TV around family life. And right now, with a free Sky Plus box, you can too. At the touch of a button, record a single programme or a whole series automatically, so you don't